Hello everyone, um, this is another Chi200 video and we are almost finished. This is it, uh, last one. And after that you guys have pretty much uh, finished the entire course, really. You're ready for the final. Um, it's been quite an adventure. And uh, we're going to finish it off with Steam Cycles, more specifically in this case the Rankine Cycle. Okay, So you should understand now that this, the Carnot Cycle is a completely ideal theoretical uh, power cycle that will probably never exist in our lifetime, or uh, a lot of lifetimes. So then the next iteration to that is the Rankine Cycle. And even the Rankine Cycle is pretty theoretical and it's not going to be possible realistic for that to occur. It's more like the power power plant cycle would be more realistic. But uh, this question here that I've chosen, it is question 8.4 in um, your textbook, Intro to Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics by uh, Van Ness and Smith. And um, I decided to choose the temperature at 450 degrees because I give you three different ones. So uh, I chose the 450 one. I encourage you to either, you know, once you feel like you've uh, understood these cycles, either try right away before me or after me, uh, try the one at 500 degree, 550 degrees or 650 or any of the other uh, problems. Now, I decided to do a uh, production plant because it's, I find it's, you know, it's a full summary of, uh, of everything before that, like adiabatic cycles. Uh, that would be chapter seven. Um, so that will, this will really show whether or not you have a good understanding of the material beforehand. Um, so yeah, power cycles. Um, so as you see here on my diagram, uh, this is the one they have set up in the book. I chose 0.4 as a point uh, where it's saturated liquid. Uh, it just has just gone through the condenser and it's right about to be pushed into the pump. Uh, point one is now it's being pumped out, so it's a bit more, uh, it's a bit warmer, and a bit more pressure. And now, uh, yeah, that's it's come, it's just being put into the pump. Point two is right before it's going to go into the turbine, and point three is uh, right after it's gone through the turbine, and it is now a mixture of vapor and liquid. Okay. All right. So this question here, it says, uh, you know, you've got steam that enters the turbine of a power plant operating on the Rankine cycle um, at 3,300 kilopascals and exhaust at 50 ki uh, kilopascal. Um, now, right away, for myself included, I wondered where. What does that mean? Where Where is the exhaust coming out and where is it entering? And um, four and one would be. Uh, would be that, that that'd be the specific so um, the uh, KPA at point 0.4 would be 50 uh, the pressure at point 0.4 would be 50 and the pressure at point 0.1 would be 3300 kilopascals okay all right now, when when we want to get into these types of question, we have to think about, of course, what do we need to find in the back of the textbook charts? Uh, what information is presented to us? And these questions, they really inundate you with a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to take it starting at point four. Okay, right before we hit the pump, we are at 50 kPa. Now, if you go in the back of your book, you're going to look for the volume which I have right here. You're going to find the enthalpy at 0.4, which is 340.564 kilojoules per kilogram. And you're also going to find, of course, alongside with that, is the enthalpy of the va saturated vapor and the enthalpy of the saturated liquid. Um, in this case, the enthalpy of the saturated liquid is the same as, as the enthalpy of at 0.4. Um, they, we assume that Point four is you know it's exact same it's on the exact same line if you look at that uh, Rankine chart. Now, from that, we got to start thinking about okay, what's going to happen now that it goes through this pump? This pump is going to do work on the um, this uh, fluid. Okay, 
So that work of the pump is simply the volume times uh, the change in pressure. What is the change in pressure? We were provided with that, which was uh, 50 and 3,300. 50 being in, uh, the initial, 3,300 being the final. So very easily, the math is 3,300 minus 50 times 1.03. Watch out the volume charts in the back of the book they always put it in centimeters cubed per gram so I don't know why they do that it's not really a standard unit but anyway uh, you have to convert that into kilograms because that is the standard we use uh, generally in most questions so you divide it by a thousand to for the conversion factor and you're gonna get that the work of the pump is 3.348 kilojoules per kilogram all right we have now found the work of the pump now, once we found the work, we want to find the enthalpy at point 1. So what is the enthalpy of point 1? Think of it as like, it's enthalpy at point 4, plus that teeny little bit of work that the pump just did. So that teeny little bit of work that we just found, 3.348, is going to be added to H4, which we found from the back of our book. So, you combine two, and you simply get 343 point nine one one kilojoules per kilogram okay moving right along we've just pumped everything up and we are about to hit the entrance point of our turbine again we're gonna have to go and dig back into the end of our book and find what is the enthalpy at the temperature provided to us at 450 uh, degrees Celsius my bad uh, very easily we find it we say it's 3,040.6 kilojoules per kilogram. We also find the entropy alongside that. We find, uh, which is 7.0373 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Um, the next part is, uh, we got to think about point 0.3. Now, if you look at the Rankine cycle, it is perfectly point 0.3. I call it a 3 prime because it's like, ideal the ideal point three prime is vertically is horizontally in the exact same position as two and s is the x-axis therefore we can assume that three prime is the exact same entropy as point two the enthalpy at point three however is not the same um because the turbine is performing work and it is it is taking out a lot the enthalpy at point 3 is simply the enthalpy of a saturated liquid plus the uh, X3 prime, which is the quality of the steam. Because remember, at point 3, this stuff is a, it's a, it's a, a mixture between vapor and liquid. So it's the steam quality times the difference between the, uh, the enthalpy of the vapor and the enthalpy of the liquid. But of course, before we even do that, we'd have to find the uh, steam quality, which is simply a ratio, which is S3 prime minus satura the entropy of, S of the saturated liquid divided by the entropy of the vapor minus entropy of the liquid. And so if you take the numbers that we have found, 7.0373 minus 1.0912, we found that on the page pre uh, beforehand, that was a saturated liquid, divided by the, sa the entropy of the um, vapor minus the entropy of the liquid. And if you do the math, you're going to get a steam quality of 0 0.914. So that's some pretty good high quality steam right there, I'll tell you that. Um, moving on from that, we take our 0 0.914, we plug it into our equation here to find H3 prime, and we're going to get um, 0 0.914 times 2646 uh, that was also found in the back of the book on the previous slide I had up minus 340.564 which is obviously again found on the previous slide and HL obviously again should be negative th uh, should be positive 340.564 you do the math you plug it all in and you'll get 2447.7 kilojoules per kilogram all right so we found a lot of stuff. However, is that really what we want? 
The question specifically stated it wanted us to find the thermal efficiency of the cycle and the quality of the exhaust steam from the turbine um, at the specific temperature. So we found at least the steam quality and now we're just going to move on and find the last bit here. So the equation we need to use in order to find the um, thermal efficiency is that efficiency is equal to the absolute value of the work done by the turbine plus the work done by the pump divided by QH. So this seems a bit abstract, but this is representative of the work being outputted by our system divided by the amount of work put in. So QH here is the boiler is actually Q in, okay? You're putting in, you're burning in maybe some sort of fuel and you're putting that power into our cycle. And then that turbine is going to do, it's going to expand the um, gas producing work and our pump is, you know, it's, uh, it's increasing the pressure of the fluid. So QH, okay, is the difference in enthalpy at point 0.2 and point 0.1. Uh, H2 we had previously written down was 3340.6. And H1, we had found that on the first slide, which was 343.91. You do the difference and you'll get 2,996.7 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, the turbine, it's, again, that big drop from 0.2 to 3 prime. So the difference of that uh, for the work of the turbine is simply the difference between 0.3 uh, and 0.2. So there we had also found these numbers previously. And it's 2,447.7 minus 3,340.6. And that gives you negative 892.87 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, make sure you keep a negative sign because we still have to add our little bit of pump work that's done, which is positive 3.348. Uh, so you take that number, you add it to this very uh, negative number, and you will then absolute value this, okay? And then you divide it by the work of our boiler, the QN, 2,996.7, and you get an efficiency of 0 0.297, so about 30% efficiency. And that pretty much sums up, this is that, this is the entire question. Um, these is some, this is something you would, it was pretty easy, this one. Um, this is something you should ex could easily expect on the final, or maybe it would be uh, an adiabatic system, uh, like chapter seven. Um, on top of this, you should know, sometimes he could do, Dr. Berg could make everything 100% ideal, and then question B or something will say, okay, well, what would you do now if your pump was only 70% efficient? Or what would you do now if your turbine was only 65% uh, efficient? How, how, do you, how do you adjust for this, okay? And that's a more realistic um, power plant. Um, those, aren't, those aren't much harder. Uh, you'd, again, you do all these steps, but with a little extra. You'd um, you would start taking uh, those other equations that you would easily have on your um, uh, formula sheet that you would make yourself at home. Don't worry. Um, you would have those extra equations to find the efficiencies and everything labeled out. So I encourage you to you know do this question maybe again with a different number set of numbers or do other ones that are just some somewhat different, like question eight point three is a whole bunch, um, or maybe some later on. But I think this is very uh, re uh, representative of the final, and I hope you understand it well. You guys need to uh, be very at ease using the steam table at the end. You also need to be able to visualize the chart, the Rankine chart, the Carnot ch chart, very easily. Okay, this needs to be known like the back of your hand. Honestly, uh, this is this is expected of all chemical engineers. And of course, you shouldn't like hesitate. Like, oh no, what do I do next? What do I do next? You got. It has to become very naturally, and you know, step by step, how to keep going. Um, and knowing the chart visually helps with that. Well, I hope you've understood this. I hope you keep practicing. But apart from that, thanks for listening.